Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques, and everything about Excel. I want to say thank you so much for all my new subscribers. We're almost at 10,000. This is awesome. Really appreciate it. Also, thank you so much for all of the likes on the last video and the previous videos. Uh, you guys are the best fans. Really appreciate it. Uh, key, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing now and then click on the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the very next video. All right, today I wanted to show you how to do, uh, how to add resource names or really any task information uh, to the end of a Gantt chart. As you see here, we've got resource names. This could be percent complete. It could be started, not started. It could be some sort of risk tolerance, whatever you'd like um, in your Gantt chart using Microsoft Excel 2013 or Excel 2016. All right, so the last post, uh, we showed you how to fake these data labels using the secondary category uh, access labels. Really kind of a tricky situation. That's great for Excel 2007, 2010 in Excel, uh, but this one's gonna show you Excel 2013 or 2016, a lot easier to put this task information over to the right side of your Gantt chart. All right, let's get into it. Uh, what we wanna do, uh, <clears throat> so we've got our task data set up. We've got a number of phases. We have a number of tasks within each phase. This is gonna set up a uh, multi-category access labels. Now, if you uh, don't know uh, much about this, head on over to the links provided in the video, and I'll show you a little bit more about multi-level category access um, and some problems you may have. So you notice I do not have phase or task listed up in the header area of my chart data range uh, because it'll cause problems in that this duration filler is, since it's a date, it does not look or appear um, as part of the data series. It shows up as part of the labels and it causes problems. So just move those up. That's kind of your easiest way. Sometimes uh, that is your easiest fix on a lot of things. All right, so uh, we have our different days of duration filler. So our this task here is starting on 2005. This, uh, or I'm sorry, on February 5th. This one's starting on February 12th, February 26th. And each task, how long is it gonna take? Seven days, 14 days, 63 days. Now, I've added a new column here next to uh, the Gantt chart data. So this Gantt chart data is, is all you need is typically there. We've added a new column here called resource filler. And we're gonna add a data label to this resource filler um, series that we're gonna add. Um, and then we're gonna create data labels for resource name and attach them to the resource filler. Now, I recommend when you add this column, put in a number that is a little greater than your maximum value of 63. Um, so I'm gonna put in 100 just to make sure I can see it on the chart. I'm gonna make this zero at the end of the day. Uh, but right now that is how we'll be able to see it within the chart. We also have our resource names by task that we're gonna add to each one of the individual tasks that you see here. All right, let's go ahead and create our chart. So we wanna highlight our data range a2 and then go down all the way to E11. We're gonna go up to our insert ribbon. We're gonna go over to the charts group and we're gonna find the insert column or bar chart. And then when we click on that, you'll see there is a 2D stacked bar chart. So we're gonna insert a 2D stacked bar chart as you see here. All right, so uh, we have our chart created. You can see the uh, values in blue are the duration filler. If I click on the red, that is our duration in days. And the green is the value of 100 for every task for our resource filler. Now, next thing I like to do is uh, notice plan is on the bottom of my Gantt chart. It should be on the top uh, as I have my data. Um, since it's a bar chart, it is putting it down on the very bottom. So I wanna go into my chart, double click on the uh, access, uh, horizontal, uh, vertical access, and you will then see a format access dialog box. Uh, and if you scroll all the way down within the access options section under uh, the access options, you'll notice there is a checkbox for category in reverse order. Once again, this is for Excel 2016. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, close on that. And you can see that plan is now on the very top uh, now, I, what next thing I want to do is I want to modify my vertical axis. Oh, I'm sorry, my horizontal axis. You'll notice that all of these dates are overlapping. It's got the year in there of 2018. I'm just going to double click on the um, axis uh, for the horizontal axis. 
And as you can see here, we've got a number of things we gotta change. First off, the bound is the minimum. This is fixed in Excel 2010, but Excel 2013 and Excel 2016, you just have to change your minimum bound. New option here, it's called bound instead of fixed category or uh, uh, value for your access value. So what we wanna do is we wanna change this to the date. Right now it's um, defaulting to about uh, uh, the nearest thousands of values because it does recognize it's pretty uh, far out there. It's a, probably a date access. So it's doing uh, to the nearest thousand. What I want to do is move this to February 5th, 2018. That value I just happen to know is 43,136. And um, when I click away, you'll notice that it's changed that. It's changed it in my chart, and I can click on reset if I really needed to. But 2018 on February 5th is our first date. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is I do want to change my number format. So I'm going to um, scroll down within, uh, let me collapse actually the access options. You'll see number is a choice now within that format axis. And then if I change the type, to a three slash one for the month and day. Uh, it'll make my chart look just so much better. All right, you can now see my chart uh, horizontal axis is all fixed um, and we're getting pretty close to uh, go ahead and add our data labels. So what I wanna do is I wanna first select this resource filler uh, data series. I'm gonna go up to my design ribbon. I'm gonna go over to add chart elements and I'm gonna go to data labels inside base. Now you can see it's added a value of 100 for every single one of those um, uh, data labels. I don't want a value, I actually want a range. Um, so I'm gonna double click on my data labels and you'll see I brought up my format data labels uh, dialog box. And what I wanna do is um, make sure I keep those selected, the uh, uh, data labels. And what I wanna do is I want to change um, Oops, I'm on the wrong section here. Label options, so under text options, label options. You can see value from cells. This is the Excel 2013, Excel 2016. New option that's available. You can now create labels from values from cells. So click on that. It brings up a dialog box for the data label range. You just go into your worksheet, highlight, drag and drop on your range for those values and click on OK. Now, once you've done that, what you wanna do is you wanna uncheck value. We don't wanna show the number 100 or zero or whatever it is in our chart at all. So uncheck that and I can close this. And if I bring my chart over, you'll now see that Miguel, Luis, Maria, Steve, uh, Maria, Luis, they're all data labels within our chart now. Uh, we're pretty close. We just have to clean up our chart a little bit. Now, once I've double clicked on the data series for my, um, uh, my duration filler, uh, we just want to change the fill options under this fill and line options under that paint can and change that to no fill. And likewise, I can do the same thing for the green resource fill uh, data series that you see as well. I'm just gonna click on that and leave my data series dialog box open, click on no fill, and we're pretty close. Notice uh, everything's looking pretty good here. The final chart cleanup that we wanna do is uh, click on your chart, click on the chart title, hit your delete key, hit, click on the legend, hit your delete key. Finally, uh, the thing you notice is there's a lot of space over here in the right of the chart, and that is because we have 100 set up as a value for resource filler. I want to just highlight that whole range hit zero so we can not show that in the chart anywhere. It'll still be shown in the chart, but it'll have a value of zero. I'm gonna do zero, control, enter. That fills in zero all the way down. And as I bring my chart over, you can see the final chart has plan, develop, test, deploy. I've got my task information next to uh, the tasks themselves. A lot easier than when we did this in Excel 2010. So hopefully you've upgraded to 2013 or 2016 and you can now have that new option where we've added a new series and added data labels to that series um, so that they show up in the appropriate spot. Hopefully you found this trick useful. Thanks for all the likes, it's really appreciated. Thanks for watching my video. Remember to hit the like button and leave a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my video channel by clicking on the EDT logo and then scroll down and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications. If you need more details or links, click on the step-by-step -step image. Finally, 
check out these other videos you might also like.